Yeah, it's shared right now, Madhu Kar, so. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, like, uh, today I'm going to tell about, like, uh, how to set up MIFO6 uh, develop environment. Uh, we have, like, a uh, clear uh, setup, uh, like, a clear documentation in the uh, GitHub wiki page. Yeah, the so like um, prerequisites of softwares uh, should uh, should be installed is like uh, one thing is Git and uh, Java 1.6 or higher version like 1.7 is also fine like and MySQL 5.5 and uh, for community app uh, you need to install uh, with uh, Node.js and uh, uh, in should have one of uh, like any develop uh, integrated develop uh, environment like IDE like Eclipse or uh, Spring tools. Uh, those are the uh, software prerequisites. Like um, uh, like after uh, installing the like uh, once you are done with the Git uh, Git and um, uh, like uh, Java and um, MySQL. So uh, the first step is like uh, we have to uh, clone, uh, uh, we have to fork our project from uh, Info6. Uh, yeah. Here uh, you can see the uh, how to fork our uh, fork project. So you can fork into your uh, repository. Then after uh, forking, you here you will uh, get one clone URL of your code so just copy that link and uh, yeah, just clone the public uh, project Okay, it's cloning. Uh, I think it's done. Uh, yeah, after uh, completing of cloning, uh, you will be able to see uh, one project, uh, one folder which has our MIFO6 project. Just uh, change the directory. Now, uh, by default, uh, the application will come into uh, develop mode. And uh, to get the all latest updates uh, daily, on a daily basis, we have to find our code based to a remote repository. Like, uh, meaning uh, to the base uh, applic uh, our project, uh, base or open MF me for six project to add a remote get, uh, get remote and stream and so from yeah, once after adding of string, uh, I can get the new codes like running with fetch upstream. So this will get the all the other branches like uh, whatever the releases 
and whatever the sub branches are present in the open ml so uh, like uh, like uh, yeah once we are done with the updates just uh, do a, uh, like update our uh, your code base with the latest from our uh, develop so just now I found my code is up to date then uh, uh, move on to the like uh, next Eclipse kind the project or see see on wiki uh, the next step is like after cloning the uh, application uh, we have to set up a uh, gradle and actually we are using a uh, gradle uh, for uh, as a build tool for application so uh, to set up gradle uh, you no need to do anything just uh, we already have a wrapper just uh, you cd in, change the directory your directory into mifos ng provider and uh, just run gradle w war so, so actually what it will do is uh, uh, it will download the uh, appropriate gradle version and it will download the dependencies uh, which are required for our application like uh, the frameworks and everything uh, it's doing. then after that uh, we have uh, like uh, uh, the other step is after this we have to eclipse our project and just we need to set up yeah meantime uh, we will uh, tell you like uh, how to set up a database Uh, actually, I'm dropping my databases because I already have set up. I'm creating database. Uh, actually uh, our application is like a multi tenant application so we have two databases like uh, one is the master schema which holds the all tenants and uh, the other is like uh, tenant databases which have copy of uh, all base schemas uh, like uh, just the, uh, the uh, those are the just uh, schema uh, versions like uh, minimum this the um, new databases like with the base schema of uh, actual MIFOSIQ database.
Um, Yeah, uh, and one thing is like uh, for a uh, MIPOS application, MIPOS X application, the preferred uh, settings for development is uh, root and MySQL. Like as we have like uh, we have some tasks in the Gradle, uh, like those are predefined scripts which will update the all tenants, like uh, based on the latest version uh, code changes which are present. Uh, which if anyone had uh, updates any patches regarding the database like uh, I think this is for savings like uh, on savings if they introduce any tables so they will update the patches and when you start the server automatically those patches will be uh, executed I think yeah uh, this was done mm, then uh, the next step is like uh, we have to so to import our project into our workspace, just we need to eclipse the application. Um, so this will um, download the uh, like all the some like uh, some source uh, jar files and it will create the uh, class uh, like it will build the class path and it will create that project settings and everything yeah. you can see those settings here like what are the tasks which is executing Discussions. Uh, so uh, now I'm trying to improve. Yeah. Now uh, we already uh, like uh, now uh, like uh, entire project setup uh, is done from the uh, uh, project side. Like now we'll import and we'll start the application and come uh, okay. I'll import general existing projects to this. Yeah. 
this thing for it Yeah. Uh, like as you said, like uh, uh, that we have everything uh, that are to update our uh, default attendance. The but uh, first time task is like uh, we have to update the uh, we have to create the master scheme of our uh, attendance. So just moving. Just so this is the uh, task name. Uh, which which will execute and it will create the schema for uh, because So this tenant table will hold the all the list of tenants. So by default, uh, like uh, uh, it has the entry like called MIPUS platform tenants. So and I already have the I already created the empty set with MIPUS platform tenant. tenant. Sorry, uh, it's the table name is a database name is MIPUS tenant default. So, uh, and the next step is like uh, this uh, start the uh, so like uh, server meaning run the application. So, uh, we don't need to run from uh, outside of Tomcat, outside like uh, uh, we need to deploy it and we need to we don't need to configure any Tomcat server as we already have a Tomcat plugin, plugin for the building plugin for the, uh, in our application. So just uh, run this uh, server, cadden to See if you observe here, it is listening on 8005 port by default. So, uh, which we can use uh, for uh, remote debugging from our Eclipse. Like, uh, run. yeah, as a debug setup. Debug guys, debug configurations. If you go down, so now we have the more Java application. New. So the port number is 8005. The debug mode is starting.
github account and just copy the clone URL In the readme you can have the instructions how to set up and what are the prerequisites of this to be installed. Yeah. You need to have uh, npm should be installed. Basically no package manager. NPM stands. Then after that uh, after installing uh, Node.js you have to make sure that uh, you install Bower and Grunt. So Grunt will use for uh, build our application uh, like uh, uh, for develop, uh, development convenience like uh, we'll develop uh, like every controller as individual file. So as in a production environment we'll merge on those uh, individual files into we'll um, concatenate into a single file. So for uh, we are doing this for um, better performance uh, purpose. Yeah, if you see here, uh, it is executing the, all the uh, database updates. First, it will run the base schema, and whatever the patches are present in the database, like uh, in the uh, like you can execute manually also uh, those. Uh, data updation clicks from uh, under uh, under our project under db folder migrations cool db so, so these are the version files it is like in the future like if you want to uh, Add any um, uh, any, any database changes. Just uh, you have to follow this convention, and uh, you have to update this SQL data. SQL. You have to save your schema in data SQL file, and you have to update here. That's about our database schema. Next, it's cloned. Yeah, it is started. So. Next, oh, we have so now our application is uh, set up everything. So this we have to launch our application from our command line. Just So, 
So it will pass the password. Username is Mufos and password is password by default. So uh, application is set up uh, perfectly. Uh, the platform is set up. See here. Sorry. The application is given to a remote perspective. Just for ensuring for you guys. Then check out uh, all the lands. Previously, we are, uh, we are using this unit, but uh, we are using uh, uh, most. Uh, we build one more application with the most newer technologies like Angular, Kernel uh, JS. Like uh, uh, the uh, community app is like basically uh, basically a single page application. So, like, uh, everyone can easily contribute. Uh, and you can uh, test the application. Uh, you, can call, you can call the application from REST client. This REST client is uh, like a uh, Firefox plugin. Uh, you can we are using basic HTTP basic authentication. The username is Mufos and password is password. And uh, we have to provide two headers like. Uh, what is the content type we are passing? It is basically application by JSON, and we need one more header, like which is uh, to specify the what is the tenant name. Like uh, as our application is like a multi-tenant application, so first uh, we have to pass the tenant identifier. With the uh, tenant identifier, like it will identify the to from which schema it has to pick the details, like. Uh, so if it is a uh, tenant default, like it will go to Mufos platform tenants table and identifies the tenant. If tenant is there, it will pick the 
what is the schema name what is the mean, uh, database connection properties like uh, uh, host and uh, that uh, database is the name and database password everything so with that it is try to establish one connection and it will uh, returns to connection pool as it uh, this one is like uh, we can pass uh, tenant name as a, like as a query parameter like uh, tenant identifier equal to tenant name you can pass in the header itself like x equals platform tenant id and the value is tenant name so Two hundred is okay, and response bodies. So the same data we we have got here. So he in the post, you can uh, post the uh, data like for some, for example, create client or any other thing, uh, create office. You can provide some JSON data, and you can call the APIs. So. Uh, yeah. It is taking a bit time to clone. In the meantime, uh, we will see some good comments like uh, how to contribute back to uh, uh, community. See this place. So presently my working directory is clean. So uh, in this API I will add stupid statement. So I modified uh, Office API resource file. So the modified files it will be shown here. So to contribute back, like uh, if you uh, like, if you see uh, like big status will comment list of the uh, what are the changes to be need to be committed and uh, what are ideally like what are the files which you are modified. So uh, first we have to uh, add these files to git index tree. So we will done from git add hyphen hyphen all. So these are basic git comments. Like, now if you see git status, so changes to be completed. I mean, this one is added to git tree and it is uh, we have to commit. Uh, we have to uh, commit uh, changes to save so now uh, I have an extra comment and uh, compared to up, uh, de uh, from develop I am ahead by one comment so Again, uh, same process to get the uh, like uh, new change. Like we have to add, uh, 
point our upstream to open the mechanism. Okay. Just check out the dialog branch. Check out. Open the regular. Yeah. Let's take a swap between the next team. Next. So after that, uh, you have to make sure all power is installed. Power and gun both are. Now, before uh, sending any pull request, uh, you have to make uh, you should make sure like uh, your code is up to date. Do a git switch. Yes. Then uh, we have to push our code to just uh, you have to enter your uh, username and then password. That's it. Uh, then contributing back to the community. Next, after that, uh, you have to run these commands. Uh, like, uh, you have to install 
ग्रंट सब बोरेज इंस्टॉल ना So actually, uh, this bore install will uh, result in the, all the different dependencies uh, which are required for uh, community app. So Angular is a dependency. And uh, the other thing is that you have to update the uh, uh, JVM options to uh, get uh, out of get free errors from um, Tom Jim's base errors, the Java apps. Next, do npm install.
Yeah, uh, like after uh, once it completes it the uh, downloading all the dependencies, just we have to open uh, this index.html file. Uh, so um, as we said, like uh, this is some uh, uh, individual client app. So we can directly access some file system, or we can deploy it in the uh, Tomcat server. Uh, you can from there also you can access. Okay, thanks, Madhukar, for going through that. And it'll be great to have that as a recording for others in the community to view. And you know, I think it'll help them if they get to any gotcha steps where they get blocked. So, okay. Well, if there are no other topics, thanks for everybody who's still listening onto the call. We'll wrap this call, and then yeah, definitely around summer of code. Any questions? Continue to share them on IRC or the mailing list, and we'll make sure to get to the questions that are outstanding right now. So thanks, everybody. Oh, and just also, yeah, one thing also to note, uh, next week on Thursday we'll have our regular, you know, user meetup call, and this time around uh, Kipu is going to be demonstrating their Qmobile mobile application, and then on Friday we're also going to have another webinar, and a company called Corrent is going to demonstrate a solution they've created which automates the provisioning of cloud instances of Mifos X. So they've sassified you know, both our legacy software and the new Mifos X code base. And they're going to be showing off their tool, which makes it easy to configure and run different cloud setups and also to handage, handle the billing and management of these cloud instances. So that demo is going to be on Friday at 2 p.m. GMT, but we'll send out details on that uh, in the upcoming days. So thanks, everybody, and have a good rest of the week. Thanks again, Madhukar, and everybody who's participated on the call. Bye-bye. Yeah.